Hey everyone, in the last video, I show you how you can use JavaScript code and the one inch API so you can swap massive tokens to die. In this video, we're going to continue from the last one because I am going to show you how you can swap your die to Matic. And it does involve some extra steps because die is an ERC20 token. So if you're interested in learning about this, then definitely stick around for the rest of the video. It's going to be a step-by-step -step guide. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can always be informed with all things blockchain, crypto, and even finance. All right, so let's start with the code. So in the last video, I showed you how to get to this point so far where we were swapping Matic tokens to DAI. In this video, we're doing DAI to Matic. So definitely check the last video if you haven't seen it yet. And I will also be pushing this code to GitHub as well. So let's just clean up the code a bit before we decide to um, swap the token. So I have hard coded the addresses here. So I have hard coded the addresses. So let's take that out so it's no longer hard coded. So in this case, the from token address is going to be die. So let me just quickly check that on Polygon scan. So I'm going to search die. Awesome. All right, so that's die. And then the two token address is going to be equal to zero X E -E -E. <laughs> That's what the NATO token normally is, because in this case it's Matic, which is the NATO token on the Polygon blockchain. And then the from token amount that we plan to swap is going to be one, so one DAI. Um, but we have to represent DAI in terms of weight. So in this case, we already have it here as one with 18 zeros. So just going to copy this here, make it a string. Awesome. So now we have the from token address, the two token address, which is Matic. So that's Matic. That's die. And then we're going to pass it to the swapper. So from token address to token address and then from and then from token amount. OK, and I'm also going to make those parameters of the swapper function as well. So everything lines up. Now I need to replace it in this string. So because it's a variable, use dollar sign clearly brackets. So from token address, do the same with two token address, and then do the same with two token or from token among, sorry. All right, so let's save that. Cool. So now we are still in the same place. We're just saying that now we want to swap diatomatic. We're going to be swapping one. Let me just show you that I have how much die I have in my wallet so you can see before I do the swapping. So right now in my wallet, right now I have 2.99 die, which I will swap to Matic, and I have 7.6 Matic. So before I do that, let me just show you what needs to happen. So we can't just simply swap DAI to MATIC. And the reason is because DAI is an ERC20 token. So if I am here in the one inch um, UI, you see they're saying give permission to swap DAI. So in order to allow your DAI token to be used by the one inch smart contract, you have to give the one in smart contract permission to spend your DAI tokens. The reason is because DAI, which is an ERC20 token, was created on top of the Polygon blockchain with code. It was a smart contract. And when you have a smart contract, you normally like to include some kind of security measure to make sure people don't take advantage of it. So if you have DAI tokens in your wallet or any ERC20 token in your wallet, you don't want any application to be able to perform an action on it. You have to first give the application or the smart contract permission to swap it. So that's what we need to do in our code as well. So normally you have to interact with the smart contract method to do so, but one inch has helpfully provided an API method to do so. So if we go to their Swagger documentation, you see here they have an approved method. And when you call the approved method, they give you the transaction data that you would send. So if I go back to die, so oops. So this is the contract address. I'm going to put that here in Swagger doc. So paste and the amount. So in this case, I know it's going to be one. You can do in, you can do a really large number as well. I'll just do one for this example. Execute. 
And here, this is the response. So they essentially giving you the data that's going to be sent on their end and they're gonna send it to the small contract. So let's just see what that would be. So in our case, let's create a method for approval. Um, so a sync function approve. So it's gonna to be token address and then token amount, how much we'd like to approve. And then we're going to have a similar structure here. We're just going to put it in a try catch loop so we can gracefully deal with any errors when we call the API. I'm going to say, uh, could not approve token. Cool. And what we're going to try is we're going to try to get information from the API method. So if we just copy this for now, this is a method. I mean, yeah, this is the API call that we have to do. It's very important that you use this kind of quotation if you want to supply a variable. So the variable I'm going to supply is the token address and then the token amount. Awesome. All right, awesome, and that's gonna give me a response. So for testing, I'm just gonna say console log response, oops, response. And I'm gonna test that. So I'm gonna test it in, uh, let's test it in a swapper method. So we're gonna say if from token address is not equal to Matic because <laughs> you know with Matic it is does need approval so if it's not equal to Matic then I need to approve it so from token address and from token amount and I'm just going to comment this because we don't want the actual swapping to happen just yet And we're just going to test that. All right, so what we're going to do right now, we're just going to run this code. So what we're testing is when you call the swap method, it would first check to see if the from token address is equal to Matic. Obviously, this is case sensitive right now. It probably shouldn't be, but um, I, I typed in everything, so I'll fix that later. And yeah, so we're basically saying if from token address is not equal to the native token, then we're going to approve it because we believe it's an ERC20 token. So I'm going to try that. So if I go to cool and that looks good, it's just going to print the response. All right, awesome. So node swap.js. All right, so we see it returns a whole bunch of stuff because it's an HTTP request. But the most important part is this data section here. So with, it's going to return an object called data, which includes the transaction data that we require. So I am going to say that transaction data, so if response.data, if response.data, then I'm going to say data is equal to response.data. Um, I'm gonna also going to set some things because as you see, it didn't specify the gas limit for the transaction. So I'm just going to like give it, it shouldn't take more than 500,000, but I'll just give it probably a million. So data.gas is equal to... Uh, yeah, 1 million. What else do I need to supply? So it has the data, it has the gas price, it has a two. So this is the die token that is calling. So it's calling the smart contract on the die token. This data probably is telling it which address that it's going to give permission to. And I actually recognize here, this is actually the one in swap smart contract address. So it's going to give permission to the one in smart contract address to be able to spend this on behalf of myself. Um, just for safety, I'm going to say data.from is equal to my wallet.address. Cool. And 
And then I'm going to send that transaction. So I'm going to say TX is equal to await. I'm just looking down here because I have it here. I did it before. Sometimes forget it. So web3.eth.send transaction. And we're sending the data object as a data for the transaction. And if TX.status is equal to true, then we're going to print. Then we're going to print approval successful. Cool. Else approval unsuccessful. All right, so let's test this again. So node swap the JS. So I forgot to not let the sprint, but that's okay. Yay, approval successful. So that means that the smart contract should have permission to spend it. So now that I know that works, then I could go ahead with the rest of the code, which is basically saying, I would like to swap from this address, which is die, to this address, which is matic. And I would like, once I get that data, I would then send the transaction, the swap would be successful. All right, so now we just need to make sure that we have the correct weights in place. So the approve method is an async function. So we need to make sure we say await in the swapper method so that we can wait for the approval to be complete. Because even though we're waiting for the transaction in the swap method, we need to also make it wait for that particular function. So we're going to do await, right? Wonderful. So now we should be ready to run this code. So we're swapping one die to Matic. And once it, the swap function is checking to see whether or not it is a native token, if it's not, it's going to approve it. And then the one inch API is going to check to see what the swap route would be. It will give us a transaction data and then we can send the transaction and hopefully the swap would be successful. So let's test it here. So node swap. Okay, so I guess right now it's checking to see whether or not the token is a native token. If not, it's going to approve it. So it's probably conducting an approval right now. Yay, so the approval is successful. And now this transaction would probably do the swap. Yay, awesome, so the swap was successful. So now let us go back to my wallet. Yeah, so as you can see, I now have more Matic. I have 8.34 Matic tokens. I think previously I had 7 point something, and I now have less die. I have 1.99 die, and previously I had 2.99. So I definitely did swap one die, and it gave me Matic. I think the price of Matic now is probably around $1.34 or something. I'm not too sure. So yeah, so now I have more Matic tokens, and the swap is successful. So now you know how you can swap your tokens using the one inch API as well as JavaScript. And you not only learned how to swap die to Matic, but essentially any ERC20 tokens to any other token. So I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to watch it over again to make sure you understand all the steps required. I will post this code to Bitbucket. Don't forget to share this video, like, comment, and let me know what else you'd like to see. See you in the next one. Bye.